Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. We recently took a look at Star Wars Bounty Hunters Part 1, so today we're going to dive into Part 2, which is just as awesome. The issue opens and our boy Valance is trying his best to locate Nakano Lash, which has brought him to a safe house on Iriadu, homeworld of Grand Moff Tarkin. Once he arrives at the safe house, everyone inside has already been murdered. 94L soon identifies one of the dead aliens as Jorstek, a black market tech supplier. We then get a flashback to Valance at a bar in his younger days, what appears to be right after he left the Imperial military. We see Valance kill several Imperial stormtroopers that were harassing a kid, saving the child. When things quickly escalate and Valance is overmatched, we learn that Nakano Lash, who we see with Jorstek, saves Valance from the Imperials because she had once been a young kid in a similar situation and no one helped her. We then return to present day and Valance has an idea on how to get an account of what's happened since there aren't any living witnesses. Valance messes around with the security system, plugs it into his arm, and a hollow recording of the incident appears showing us that Boba Fett had beaten Valance to Iriadu and made a mess of the safe house. Without any sound, Valance is able to discover where Boba Fett was headed to next after seeing a reflection of Jorstek in Boba Fett's helmet saying Galmera. As Valance leaves Iriadu for Galmera, we see Oris Binor is tailing Valance and is following him to Galmera. Meanwhile, we learn that Ta'anga has infiltrated the fortress of the Mourner's Whale on Tertharian, deep in hut space. She quickly disposes of a guard, takes out several more, before Lord Kamek, the father of Camus, appears with a litany of guards. Earlier in the issue, we learn that the Mourner's Whale Syndicate and the Unbroken Clan have been at war ever since Nakano Lash killed Camus, the heir to the Mourner's Whale, so tensions are very high between the two criminal organizations. Ta'anga informs Lord Kamek that she doesn't want want the bounty on Nakano Lash's head, but rather wants to kill the Nautilin out of revenge for the death of her brother, Ta'angor. Lord Kamek tells Ta'anga that Mourner's Whale spies have informed him that Lash used a transmitter to contact the Unbroken Clan, which he believes is proof of her plot to kill his son with the criminal syndicate. Ta'anga tells Kamek to give her everything the Mourner's Whale has collected on Nakano Lash over the years, and she'll find something that others have missed. We then cut to Bosk, who has arrived on Gal Mera, courtesy of the intel that he acquired from Dr. Afra during their encounter on Burn and Khan. Valance, who's also on Galmera, has found the grave of Nakano Lash's parents. After noticing a weird smell permeating from the grave, he asks 94L what he smells, and the droid informs him that artificial pheromones are being pumped out of the grave, acting as a recreation of the Nautilin language of Nautilla, which translates to beloved parents taken too soon. After Valance touches the grave, the composition of the pheromones Pheromones changes and the scent now refers to map coordinates. Right as this happens, Bosk appears, telling Valance he doesn't need any extra motivation to kill him. The Trandoshan bounty hunter then shoots at Valance, causing an explosion. And that's where the issue ends. This series is really, really good and I can't recommend it enough, guys. It's awesome. Definitely give it a read if you haven't already. But what are your thoughts on Star Wars Bounty Hunters Part 2? Let us know down in the comments. Want more Star Wars content? Check out some of our other videos. Please like and subscribe and stay nerdy.